Welcome to today's uh, uh, virtual panel discussion, which is being hosted by the Big Learning Network on the experiences of health workers and the use of electronic communication registries with lessons from Tanzania and Zambia. A very special welcome to our guest speakers. My name is Catherine Miawala, the Big Learning Network coordinator, the webinar host for today. Before we begin our business of the day, I would like to remind us all about the ground rules. In the chat box, please type in your name and the country where you're connecting from. And if you're sharing the same connection with a number of colleagues, type in the number, not necessarily the names, but the number of extra persons that uh, you're connecting with. We would like to encourage all the participants to mute their mics uh, so that uh, we do not um, interfere with the uh, speakers or interrupt them as uh, they continue with their discussion. And would also like to encourage um, the participants to disable their videos so that we do not affect the bandwidth for those who've got poor internet connectivity. Also, just to let you know that uh, there'll be a question and answer session after the discussion. So if you've got any questions, um, we encourage you to type them in the chat box. They'll be logged and answered during the question and answer session. We would also like to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and that the link for you to access the recording will be shared on the BID website. The topic we're talking about um, the experiences of health workers in the use of electronic immunization registries. And uh, we all know that um, electronic immunization registries have been recognized as potential solutions to immunization data quality and use challenges. And I think most of you who have actually attended uh, the webinars by the BLN that have been held in the past uh, to discuss the actual electronic immunization uh, systems. Uh, you know, what they could, what they can do or possibly not do. Um, we've also heard about, uh, you know, the different considerations that uh, should be made for systems design and deployment. We've spoken about interoperability. We've spoken about uh, readiness assessments, et cetera. But we, we've never gotten to hear from the end user's perspective. And that's why in today's discussion, we'll get to hear from an end user perspective and uh, what the experience has been uh, of the immunization health workers with these um, systems. So in today's discussion, we'll get to hear from Tanzania and Zambia as they share the experiences with electronic immunization registries. So to lead us uh, in today's discussion, we're honored to have uh, Dr. Sidney Shampile. He's a general surgeon by profession and is currently working at the university teaching adult hospital here in Zambia. And uh, he's also serving as the national coordinator of the e-health services for the Ministry of Health in Zambia under the Directorate of Clinical Care and Diagnostic Services. Dr. Shampile is an honorary lecturer at the University of Zambia and is chairperson for the Technical Committee 6 of the Zambia Information and Communication Technology Authority and the Zambia Bureau of Standards that focuses on e-health and um, ICT versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis clinical care. His main focus is on enhancing ICT uh, utilization in the health sector for improving health service delivery, promoting e-learning and encouraging research. Dr. Champile's uh, academic credentials include a Bachelor of Science in Human Biology and um, Bachelors of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, as well as a Master's in General Surgery, all obtained from the University of Zambia. A warm welcome once again to our moderator, Dr. Champile, and all the discussants. I will now give the floor to the moderator, Dr. Champile, just to introduce the speakers and also lead us uh, through the discussion. Dr. Shampile, over to you. Thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, a warm welcome to everybody who has uh, tuned in. 
Uh, today, I think it's a very exciting day, as uh, Catherine has already alluded to, because we'll be looking at the experiences of health workers, the people that are actually using the systems that we've deployed in these facilities. And we're focusing on two countries, Zambia and Tanzania. And uh, from each of these two countries, we've got two panelists. And um, allow me to introduce your panelists. The first one is uh, Asifiwe Asumwensi Kibona. Uh, forgive me for mispronouncing your middle name, but Asifiwe has been working for the government of Tanzania as a registered nurse since 2014 at uh, Manjango Health Center in Kilimanjaro region. She has worked in uh, the reproductive and child health department, supporting family planning and antenatal care and HIV counseling to pregnant women. She also works in the maternity department, supporting child uh, delivery. Currently, uh, Asifiwe supports immunization and nutrition counseling to the under five children. Uh, Among the activities, is capturing immunization data through the Tanzania Immunization Registry system, which she has used for about a year. Prior to joining the government system, Asifiwe worked as a medical attendant in a private health facility in Mbeya region for about two years. She holds a diploma in nursing. Asifiwe, welcome to the, to the panel. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much, sir. Thank you. Our next um, panelist is uh, Michael Henry Ndowe, also from, uh, from Tanzania. Henry Michael Ndowe is District Immunization and Vaccines Officer for the High uh, District in Kilimanjaro region in Tanzania and has been coordinating the immunization program for more than five years. Michael has been facilitating the vaccines supply chain for uh, to about 48 uh, health facilities, ensuring that immunization coverage is maintained. Vaccines are stored in a required temperature standard in the health facilities and also conducting training or, and capacity building to healthcare providers in uh, the immunization unit, supporting data management through vaccines information management system, and also the Tanzania Immunization Registry, as well as conducting supportive supervision. Michael has worked as a district data use mentor and is a member of Council Health Management Team. He has also, he has been a champion of the electronic immunization registry and is currently part of the national Immunize, immunization and vaccines development team rolling out the Tanzania immunization registry through a training of trainers to other regions. Michael holds a diploma in environmental health uh, science and is currently pursuing a, a BSc a uh, degree in um, environmental uh, management. Michael, welcome to the panel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our next panelist is Breven Gunga from uh, Zambia. Breven is a pharmacist with experience in pharmaceutical supply chain management, clinical pharmacy, as well as retail pharmacy. Currently, he is a district pharmacist and uh, Zambia Immunization Registry focal point person for the rural district of Chikakata in Zambia's southern province. Regarding immunization, he ensures that the right vaccines are always available to every eligible child at the right time. He holds a, a Bachelor of uh, Pharmacy degree obtained from the University of Zambia. Breven, welcome to the panel. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sidney. Thank you so much. Thank you. Last but not the least, uh, we have another panelist from uh, Zambia. Her name is Judith uh, 
Chipanta Chilema. Uh, Judith Chipanta Chilema is a, a, a state um, registered nurse currently working as in charge at uh, Kavika Clinic under Zambia Sugar uh, PLC, where she, co she coordinates and discharges clinical services to the Zambia Sugar PLC community. These services are through, uh, 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 though not limited to maternal and child health services, HIV uh, services, provision of uh, nursing care, clinical mentorship, health promotion, and wellness clinic. Judith has 23 years of experience as a nurse and previously worked in uh, Luapula province where she held positions of uh, maternal and child health coordinator at Chembe uh, Health Center in Chembe district. Antiretroviral therapy in charge uh, in Mansa where, uh, at Mansa Central Clinic and also she worked as a maternity ward in charge at, at Senama Health um, Center in Mansa District. She holds a BSc in nursing from Taxila University and advanced diploma in uh, midwifery and a diploma in registered nursing, both obtained from the University of Zambia. Judith is currently a Zambian uh, electronic Immunization Registry Champion. Judith, welcome to the panel. Is Judith on the call? I think so. Um, yeah, she's just muted. She is on the call. Judith, welcome. Uh, Judith, kindly unmute. All right. Uh, it looks like she's having uh, some technical challenges, but we hope uh, during the course of um, the discussion to join us. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, we'll go straight into our panel discussion. And um, I'll try and ask uh, questions directed to certain individuals, but as um, panelists, uh, feel free also to, to chip in. My first question will go to Asifiwe from uh, Tanzania. Yes. So we just want to find out from you what your general experience has been uh, with the using of the electronic immunization registry there in Tanzania. Are you able to speak to that? Yes, I'm able to speak on that. Okay. Yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, I, want, I want to share the general experience of using immunization registry. First of all, I can see that immunization uh, it is easy to find records. Seeing, comparing to paper record as I use barcode number. You just see enter barcode number, then the full information of the client can be seen. So it just takes a short time to have uh, the client's information. Also, immunization records are kept for a long time. It is uh, much different from paper because the paper is very easy to misplace but in the electronic immunization registry, it is not easy to express. Uh, third, easy for registration, as it shows in all immunization schedule, 
just after capturing this date. As you can see, we, we all are using this electronic immunization registry. Well, after capturing the barcode sticker, you see all information of the, the vaccination. Also, you will see the, the next date of vaccination of the client. So it makes it easy to, to, to get the client information. Also, different from paper, we were using calendar to calculate the next vaccination date. But for this, it just gives the all vaccination, the next vaccination date. Yeah, it also indicates the um, it also shows nutrition status. Just, uh, just after recording weight, so it makes it easy for counseling based on child information for child nutrition status. As we can see, when you 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 record the weight of the client, the information which comes, if the client is overweight, it shows that it. It shows that I have to cancel the client to, to minimize some nutrition, which make the client to, to overweight. Also, if the client is underweight, it provides the room for me to cancel the client to have to add to add another nutrition for the client to to get uh, to have uh, a good nutrition status yeah also is it makes it very easy to know the stock balance of uh, the vaccine because when the vaccine is is um, when the vaccine yeah, it is easy to to know the stock balance of the, the, of the vaccine. Also, it makes me easy to make order and to, to order and receive stock from the district level. It makes it because when I use paper, it, long, it takes a long time to write, then to send to district level. But this one, when I just see, go to stock to, to stock over to stock order summer i write my order then i send on time they they said bring me the my order easily also it's alert on expi on expiring date of the vaccine and is very easy to take action yeah another experience uh, it provides alerts on a stock out and is it to order new stock. Another one, uh, I can see my reports is red, such as coverage, defaulters report. I usually make follow up to defaulters in monthly. Thank you. That is all of about experience which I have, I have about electronic immunization registry. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Asifiwe. I think uh, that that is very comprehensive and I think we, we already see the advantages. Any addition from Michael? What, what is the perspective in Tanzania? In addition, like, yes. hello? Yes, please, go ahead. In addition, immunization register also can help for me to transfer stock from my district level to health facilities. Also checking data performance in daily, in monthly basis or quarterly or annually. In Tanzania immunization register can see all those data, stock data, performance of of each facilities. Also to ensure 
to compare data, maybe to compare data from one health facility to another in, in a monthly basis or in quarterly, annually, also can Tanzania immunization register can help it do so. Also, in addition, a part of transfer stock, you can check you can check the performance in each health facilities. So my colleague has already said so many things, so I, I cannot add so much. All right. Hello. Thank you very much, Michael, for yes. that. Thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. Um, so that, that picture for Tanzania, I think it's similar to what might be obtaining in Zambia. Um, Breven, is a, what is the experience so far? What, what is the general experience with uh, the, the ZIA, the Zambia Electronic Immunization Registry? From your perspective, yeah. So um, most of the things actually um, have been said by uh, the, the the Tanzanian team. Um, most of the things that I've talked they have talked about is basically what is also obtaining in in, in Zambia. Um, I work at the district uh, health office. Um, I can give an, an uh, maybe just an addition to what they have. Uh, uh, talked about. Um, we have a dashboard uh, in Zambia at uh, district level. So uh, that dashboard has actually uh, made uh, um, things easier for us at the district level. We are able to make uh, decisions just looking at the coverage, the health uh, uh, facility. So the dashboard, uh, the, the, the dashboard has made life easier for for us at the district uh, level we are able to make uh, decisions just by looking at the coverage thank and you also the Go ahead. Immunization uh, data storage. I think this is also what has been shared uh, by the uh, Tanzanian team. The storage of data at facility level has been made made easier. Um, here in um, it's, um, a challenge of under five cards. So uh, with the card uh, using. Hello. Are you able to get me? Yes, we, we can. Go ahead. Yeah, I had a connection uh, problem. Yeah, so I was, I was, I was, I was we, we had a problem with under five cards, so we used to, we, we used Zia. So data storage has been uh, has been made uh, made easier. So the other things really is basically what they have talked about the Tanzanian Tanzanian team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brevin, for that uh, experience in Zambia. Uh, Judith, are you with us? Uh, it looks like Judith still hasn't joined. Um, that's another Chilema who has joined, but I'm told she's uh, trying to join. She's had connectivity issues where she is. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Maybe back to Brevin. Uh, what, what, what challenges? Are you facing using the using the system? Okay, yeah. So um, for the <coughs> challenges, um, we had a period where we had uh, logging in problems. Um, logging in was a was a challenge in some uh, tablets where it takes long for 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 someone to, to log in, and this usually used to discourage uh, health workers. But that issue, for now, it has been uh, resolved. Uh, most people are able to log in. Then uh, another challenge was uh, is um, uh, uh, some tablets, they take long to save data, where you capture 
uh, someone wants to enter a child, they enter all the, the, the information, the names uh, and all. Then when they want to save, some tablets uh, take long to, to save. Um, that used to happen, but I think the, the server was upgraded recently. So that uh, problem has since been uh, resolved. Then uh, another challenge um, is um, passwords uh, for new for new stuff. Um, we, we had a challenge where um, um, new stuff couldn't get passwords. So uh, by nature, you know, people wanted to log in using their their credentials and all. So that was the problem. But the district of Kukupan person have been given the powers to to, to rectify that. that. So that is no longer a problem. And um, uh, some time back, we had the inconsistencies in uh, sending of uh, data bundles. Uh, but now they are sending um, talk time, uh, which we need to convert into, into bundles. But uh, that, I think, for me, it's, it's a bit of a challenge because uh, sometimes you find that people would uh, leave their data on. And if the providers are not sending bundles, actual bundles, and they're sending talk time, it becomes a problem where um, if, if, if your tablet has a data you know, uh, option on, it will basically chew your talk time. And uh, for you to convert those things into bundles, maybe it will be depleted. Then another challenge could be we had uh, experiences of theft and some damages, but uh, we've been reporting these things to the police and some tablets were recovered and uh, others not. So um, maybe uh, we need to strategize on uh, replacement of uh, damaged uh, tablets, as well as um, strategies in uh, um, securing our, our, our tablets so that they are not uh, you know, uh, prone to, to thieves and, and all. So this basically the general challenges that we've been facing. Thank you very much. Driven, uh, the floor. In terms of um, management, the use of the system itself, yes. what, what, what actual challenges are the, the users having? What, what, what is their perception? Is it a user-friendly system? Yeah, definitely yes. Um, the app, the application, the Zia, it's a very user-friendly app. Um, usually when you look at, um, when we talk about challenges in general as in using the system, uh, we talk about uh, human resource. Um, for the younger, uh, you know, the new graduates and uh, the new entrants into the system, um, as compared to the old ones and all, the, obviously, the, the, the younger ones are able to adapt to, to, to change, you know, um, for obvious reasons. The Zia tab is similar to, you know, many apps like WhatsApp, uh, Facebook and all. But um, with regard to change management, we've been having issues with uh, older uh, generation, but not all of them. There are others actually who are very quick to adapt to, to, to change. So uh, with constant monitoring, constant reminders in the, in, in, the, in the use of Zia, they are getting there. Almost everyone, I would say, is able to enter a child in almost all these facilities in the, um, the, where, the section where immunization takes place. So they are able to enter uh, a child, almost everyone. Uh, maybe the only gray area, I would say, is uh, maybe going into the technical team. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, getting into the technical details of, uh, you know, making now decisions uh, using the data that has been captured. But um, capturing information is not a problem. So there are some pockets here and there who are having uh, challenges in terms of uh, using the, 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 the information. But all in all, um, we have big centers. Uh, they are able to, 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 for example, if they want to order some, some vaccines, they are able to just click 
uh, on the on the vaccines, check uh, the, the stock levels that they have, and also forecast and order some more some more vaccines. Then uh, multiple systems, you know, uh, in Zambia we are still using the paper based, and uh, we are also using the electronic uh, version. There's also um, a, a an, electro, uh, an electronic version which captures a, a small component of uh, immunization. So basically in some big facilities, you find that maybe they are using three systems, the paper-based, the electronic, and another larger electronic which captures a small version of, uh, of, uh, of immunization. So that put pressure on the healthcare because sometimes there's some uh, reputation. But for centers where uh, there are a lot of uh, there's human resource issue, they will be able to share here and there the, the responsibilities. Uh, the, the major challenge is when one is alone at the facility where they're supposed to enter um, in the electronic and also the paper based. So multiple system, they have they are, they are, they are, it's, it's also a, a challenge. Um, then also issues of uh, staff attrition. Sometimes you find that you train certain uh, individuals and they, maybe they are transferred to another, another facility. You, you need to keep on transferring um, um, individuals. So those in terms of the overall uh, system, in terms of human resource, uh, multiple system, I think those are the major challenges that I would uh, uh, point on. Thank you very much, Brother. So, Michael, um, in Tanzania, the the issue of multiple systems how is how does it affect uh, data collection? The issue of what? Multiple Alex. systems. How I'm sure you've got multi, multiple yeah, systems. Okay. There is the paper multiple system. System. Perhaps yes. multiple electronic systems. Yes, it is a challenge also in Tanzania for using multiple systems because we are using paper and electronic system. So it has been a call for health workers for using this multiple system. So we have requested just to can use one system. If we can use the electronic system, let us use the electronic system. So we are moving from the paper to electronic system. So in, 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 in my district for now, we are in a process of using only one system, electronic system. All right. So I think that is comforting because data, when it's got uh, too many data sources, the accuracy becomes compromised. And also uh, the decision made based on that data become very inaccurate and uh, may be detrimental to the delivery of quality health services in the country. But it is comforting to know that uh, panelists here are all champions in the immunization registries in, um, in their respective countries. So Asifiwe, just coming back to you as a champion, uh, what are some of the lessons that uh, you've learned along the way and um, which you can share with uh, some of our participants here. What strategies have you used in the implementation processes to deploy and, over, and probably development of uh, these electronic uh, immunization registries in your country? Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, me, my, at my, on my side, Electronic immunization registry is uh, very easy to learn. Uh, it requires a good existing training system like peer-to-peer -peer training. So the new staff can be continuously trained. For example, I was not attended team retraining at first, but I joined it. Immunization unit while system was already introduced. So I was travel, I was trained by Divo, district immunization uh, and vaccination officer. Then I started using and I trained another users from different facility. That is what I learned from this from the system. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. In terms of this, there could be different models. Uh, the one, as a few alludes to, peer to peer is one way of doing it. And I think this ensures that uh, health workers are not pulled away from uh, a to a central location, thereby depriving uh, the clients, our clients, the patients, the services they, they so much desire. Uh, Judith, are you on the call now? Judith? Um, well, it appears. Um, Judy, Judy is on board, but it looks like, um, has she dropped? She's on board. Oh, okay. She's on board, but her, it looks like um, she hasn't gone into audio. Okay. She's yeah. not using the, the, the computer audio, maybe. <laughs> yeah, the computer right. audio. Oh, now she's on board. There she is. There she Judith. is. Judy? Hello. Hello. Oh, thank God. Oh. Hello, Judith. How are you? Hello. I'm okay. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I don't know if you've been following through the discussions. No, we had a problem with network connectivity. Oh, so I couldn't okay. So, no. oh. All right. Okay. So, Judith, just to keep you up to speed. Uh, we've looked at the various experiences of uh, electronic immunization registries in uh, Tanzania and Zambia. The panelists have ably shared some of uh, their experiences and also the challenges that we are being faced uh, from uh, these systems that we are using. Right now, we're trying to look at some of the lessons learned. I noticed that uh, you've got vast experience in um, with the use of uh, the immunization registries, like vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ZIA. So I just wanted to find out from you, what are some of the lessons that you've learned along the way that you can share with uh, everybody else uh, in terms of uh, the strategies that have been used to, to implement and also the development of uh, the ZIA and also its deployment in Zambia. Um, Judy, kindly unmute. You're muted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. Please go ahead. Yes. When we were trained in the ZIA, when it was brought to us, we had to involve management. The idea to management, management was into it. Then stakeholders were involved, everyone was involved, even the community, uh, all the health workers that we are working with, and the community-based volunteers were involved. So everyone had to take it up. Then what we get is that this is a user-friendly gadget that can be used by any health worker who's willing to use it. It's just by a click of a button, you have a child already enrolled. And then we have discovered that you're able to identify children that are due for vaccines, that are due for vaccines, then you're able to monitor even the nutrition status because it's able to calculate the SD score. So you're able to know the nutrition status of the child. Then again, when you're using the Zia tablet, you're able to generate the weekly reports. Then you're also able to generate the monthly reports. Then you're able to follow up those children that are defaulting, they are not, they are not coming. You're able to identify this child doesn't even come. When you check on the weights, you find that the, the weight from the last time you made it a year ago or three months ago, it will show. So you're able to follow those children. You have their contact numbers. So you're able to follow the mothers. What is happening? Why are you not coming? You have the volunteers. They'll follow them into the community. Then we also we have also learned that using the ZIA is easier than the paper-based because once you click, Whatever information you have registered, it will still be there. It will never 
go missing. Now with the paper gadget, you find that most of the time you start looking for the file. Which file? Where did we file this? Where did we file this? But with that, you're able to store information. Even 10 years, I think for 10 years, you're able, I don't know how. And once you lose the information, we have a, we have a saver at the district. Then there's also a saver in Lusaka. So you, you would find that even if you, you, you lose the information at your place, you're able to retrieve that information from the district and from the central saver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Judith, uh, for that elaborate um, explanation. And uh, perhaps, uh, Michael, do you want to add something? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes, please, go ahead. Oh, okay, in, in, in my, my, my district especially, uh, the, the lesson I have learned, the healthcare, the healthcare workers, or pro, health, health, healthcare workers or health providers are laden, led and interested to use electronic registers, I just need support, I just follow up, from the high level, I mean from the national level, regional and the district level. Also, the district level needed to understand is, um, or to be aware on the team, I mean CHMT, all CHMT members should know how team to use the team and how to support in, 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 in health facilities during the supportive supervision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, for that uh, submission. Um, I think uh, so far the discussion has been very fruitful and um, seeing the experiences and the challenges that we are facing, it, it's very important countries that are trying to more or less like institutionalize electronic information registries in their countries to learn from uh, some of the challenges that are being faced, you don't find yourselves in uh, in um, the same problems. For instance, the ones that have been highlighted. So, conclusion, panelists, I just want to hear some recommendations that you would give to some of these countries that are planning to implement immunization registries. Um, I can start with um, with Briven. What recommendations can you give? Riven, are you there? Riven, you are muted. Could you kindly unmute? <laughs> Sorry. Are you able to get me now? Yes. yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, all right, sorry. Um, so like uh, for recommendations, um, first of all, uh, for countries maybe who are trying to roll out these uh, programs, uh, first of all, we need to offer frequent technical support and monitoring of the system. Um, when um, the system is introduced, I think it is very important that that we have a robust technical support and also monitoring of the system is very important for successful uh, implementation. Then uh, also, um, for example, uh, in my district, we have got big centers who sometimes simultaneously do static programs and also outreach programs. So uh, if we could have more tablets in bigger centers where um, children who um, are getting the services using the static uh, session, they can still be registered as well as those um, in the outreach uh, services. We have some uh, big centers where those things actually happen simultaneously. So some children may be, may be missed. Then another thing is uh, to link the electronic um, uh, registry to the DHIS2 so that uh, on a monthly basis, um, the, 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 the ZIA can be linked to the DHIS2 so that uh, you just click 
and the information goes to the information uh, information officer. Um, I would also like to propose that uh, we carry out uh, a, a pilot where we where we can completely phase out uh, the paper based, you know, um, so that we can see how how it can it, it it can move because currently the multiple system is uh, is, is is bringing uh, challenges for obvious reasons the reputation. So I think we need to make board decisions where we can uh, pilot where we can have completely electronics. And I think it's something which is doable because uh, issues to do with crashing, if the tablet crashes, of course, those information is in the server. So we can basically retrieve it from the server. So there's nothing to worry about. So we can still make those uh, board decisions and, and um, go uh, uh, paperless. Then um, another thing is um, linking the ZIA to the supply chain system. Currently in Zambia, we have also a system uh, called Logistimo. So uh, if we can link the Logistimo, you know, um, to, 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 to Zia, where we can, um, I think that can also improve in terms of forecasting at artistic level, for example. Then um, for centers where we need to also, I would recommend that uh, for people who are planning to implement these things, we need to balance human resource, the old generation and also the younger generation at the center if they can be that balanced, you know, uh, it will be it will be it will be very helpful because the younger ones are, are quick adapt adapting to the electronics. So if you have that balance, I think that can uh, also work well for the implementation of the program. Then uh, just even general workers, general workers, and also community health workers, uh, teach uh, general workers and also community health workers to to to. to capture information. Um, we are doing that in Chikankata, District Zambia, where we still teach uh, general workers and also community health, health workers to, to, to capture that information because human resource for health is still a challenge. Then um, I think we need to pump in more resources in terms of replacement. Some, 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 some tablets are getting damaged um, and in unfortunately circumstances maybe it's stolen so we need to i think look into that um replacement strategies i think those are the recommend recommendations that can uh, uh bring forward i submit chair thank you very much uh, very elaborate uh, judith is there anything else from the zambian perspective like from the experiences that you've had that you you feel um Given as left out, just to have a complete picture. Judith, are you with us? It looks like she's dropped again. She's dropped again? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll quickly jump to as if you were. any recommendations as if you were. putting yeah. everything experiences the challenges and the lessons learned what recommendations would you give to people that are trying to implement electronic immunization registries in their countries yeah first of all the government should minimize the use of paper and that at the same time we use the system. So when the government will introduce you only using uh, electronic system, it should minimize overworking to the health workers. Yeah, that's so. Also, to countries which are not using uh, this electronic system, let them use it as it simplify our work at facility level. And so we don't get worries, worried of our records. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any addition, Michael? Something that has been left out perhaps?
Michael, are you with us? Has it dropped as well? It seems we're having connectivity problems. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So colleagues, I think um, we've done a bit of justice to this issue uh, where we're looking at uh, the, the lessons learned. Uh, this is the, the experience of Zambia and also Tanzania. What health workers are going through in, with the use of electronic immunization registries. So in, in the chat box, there is one question already. Uh, since there's only one question, I'll, I'll allow um, three questions, and this will be the fourth question. Are there any questions, quick reactions to the presentation so far? The floor is open for questions now. Uh, feel free to raise your hand or you can just speak, perhaps. All right, so quickly, uh, maybe le let me just read the question that has been posted in, in the chat box. This is from uh, Masaina Wakia from Zambia. Um, the question is um, concerned uh, how, how districts can encourage end users to have more system use and also data use from the electronic immunization registries so that they, are, they become more beneficial to them. Many a time you find that the users will just generate the data, they don't look at it, they'll just transfer it upwards. So um, I'll ask Breven, are you to speak to this quickly? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, moderator. First of all, uh, data use. Um, it, it's not really something which is um, uh, um, which is uh, restricted to, uh, to 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 the to, to the ZIA. Um, Generally, there's 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 the law uh, use 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 of that. most people even the paper paper based. You find that health workers will capture the information. And, uh, and and transfer it to the next level, be it to the district or national or you know. So um, I think the first step that we need to do is we need to 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 educate or maybe mentor health workers. They need to realize the importance of the data that they are capturing, because it, it it seems it's been tradition where you just have to capture information and send it to the next level, you know. So the first step is we need to. To, to, to mentor and also educate. Then health workers need to know the importance of the data that they're generating. Once they know the importance of the data that they generate, they can actually use it for, for making decisions. They can use it to, to solve uh, problems and challenges that they are, they are, they are facing. Um, that, I, would, I think in my opinion, actually uh, improve. Uh, the data use in terms of analysis of the data itself. So they need to basically understand the importance of the data that they're generating. It's not supposed to be a routine, you know, issue where they're just supposed to report and all. So maybe, and also when you, when you look at the electronics, um, as I, I think alluded to, um, most of the health workers right now, they are able to capture information. They are able to, 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 to register each other in the electronic uh, Register so the gray areas is the data use itself, but it's not everyone. We have centers where um, they are able to to make decisions, you know, based on the data that they are they are, they are capturing. So we just need to do more work so that uh, the data use is you know expanded and uh, every other uh, appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Preven. Um I think uh, that explanation is really, really uh, important. Um, 
there is a bit of feedback coming from some of the mics. All right. So there are two other questions in the in the chat. Uh, I'll skip the one from Dr. Puta in Zambia. Uh, this is a question directed to Michael from national level, regional and district level. So what Esther wants to know is what type of support were you referring to when you said you needed support? Michael? Uh, it looks like Michael has dropped, but I've seen Judith is back online. Okay. Judith, welcome back. Hello, thank you. Uh, you're having challenges, I can see. Yes. I'm okay. Hello, hello. Yes, is that Michael? Please go ahead, Michael. Hello? Yes, Michael, we can hear you. Go ahead. Did you, did you hear the no. question? Okay. Hello? Michael, we can hear you. Yes, yes. I, I was having just uh, some problem with internet connection. I didn't hear any question. All right. So there is a question from Esther. Uh, in, your, in your presentation, you mentioned that you needed some support from national level, regional level, and also from the district level. So she wanted to know what sort of support you are referring to. Michael, are you able to hear that? Did you hear the question? Michael? Um, Chair, maybe you could... Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll come back to Michael. Um, perhaps we take the, the question from uh, Dr. Puta from Zambia. What will it take for Zambia to go paperless? Since this seems to be a constraint. Um, any of the pan panelists from Zambia want to attempt? Hello. 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 Go, ahead, go ahead, Judith. Yes, with improved connectivity, I think we can have move away from the paper based because when we are using the here, it's very easy and work is made easier because by the click of a button, all the information about the child comes. So if we have to leave the paper based and go digital, it will be easier for us and we can move at the faster rate if the connectivity can be improved countrywide. Because at times you may want to use the ZIA, but you find that there's poor connectivity. You can't log in, you can't do anything because there's poor connectivity. So if the government can improve uh, connectivity countrywide, I think we can move from paper-based because paper-based is quite involving. You need to have stationary, you need to do photocopy, but with the ZIA, electronic gadget, you just need to connect to the to the socket and off you're you're done for the day's work thank you thank you um, judith uh, for that submission even before you come in maybe let, let me just uh, give some guidance uh this is 1702 colleagues as you may know, we started our meeting at 1603 so our hour will be will be done in the next uh, few seconds but bear with us, um, we, did, we decided to give this a bit more time. Uh, so we exceeded uh, the discussion time by about 10 minutes. So even the question time, we have to allow it for uh, another 10 more minutes. So we should be concluding our business maybe by 
by in the next 15 minutes or so. So I see two hands. Uh, maybe before I go to the hands, Breven, you wanted to say something just quickly in under a minute. Yeah, just to add on, uh, thank you so much, moderator. Just on, to, to add on uh, on the, the question. Um, I think the, the first thing that we need to do is uh, to, we need to have the will to, to, to go paperless. Um, we need to do a pilot um, where we, 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 we can at least ascertain if this, because uh, we need to do at least some form of a pilot so that um, we can learn some lessons from where paperless uh, issues are, are going on. Then another thing is um, uh, system upgrades and also the internet thing that my colleague talked about. We still have some pockets within the country where internet is a problem, but Zia is able to work offline. So if we can, we, we, we can still upgrade the system so that we don't have login issues and everything. Uh, I think we can, we will be good, will be good to go uh, paperless. I submit here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, there were two hands, one, one hand has disappeared. Um, Rahim, please go ahead, ask your question. Uh, okay, my name is Rahim Abbas from Tanzania. My question is, uh, I, I got a doubt from a uh, moderator because they talking much about uh, uh, the problem of infrastructure. So what about the quality of the data? Because most of the people are not aware on what you are doing because they don't know what insight you bring to us or you bring to stakeholder, why you want to change from, uh, from paper-based to digital technology. Because in digital technology, you can doing data entry we can do data quality, we can put data analysis and you create visualization. Can you share to, uh, share to me insights from digital technology you are using? Uh, so are you referring to the Tanzanian presentation? Hello. Hello. Is it, hello, we can hear you. Is it okay. the case in Tanzania? Who are you directing the question to? I direct it for anybody because you are all the people. I'm not a part of the past, but I'm the stakeholder from different uh, organizations. So we want to know more what the past they are doing in digital technology because they are talking much in digital technology. But when you come all to right. reality, when you come to reality, they, we don't show any insight what you are doing, what is the impact. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Rahim. You can lower your hand. Um, Michael, do you want to answer that? More of uh, things like infrastructure and, uh, you know, yeah. these are things that. Yes, yes, Michael. Please go ahead. Michael, we can't hear you. Are you able to speak up? Um, all right. I think there's a problem with uh, the mic from Michael. Asifiwe, you heard the question. What is your comment? As As few, please unmute. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is true that the system helped to improve the data quality. Yeah, it, it gets so on. I don't have any, another addition. Maybe another, another. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I think his uh, his question, or he, I think he wants to more or less like make it more clear. Rahim, please go ahead. Say some. Any, I, I want to say this is a general question because when 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 Ashifia talking, he's talking as she she she, she, she responds for. for for her duty, is not sure inside you. how I enter data in digital system. What's the impact? What, what, what's the next after data entry? What's the impact to the community after data entry? For instance, when I work in the healthcare facility, uh, I introduce geographic information. To, they introduce geographic information because they we need to know where the patients come from. It's not to say we are the number of patients from. July to this month. So I need to know where they come from in terms of geographical. So this is my question, why we need to, to use digital technology. Because the digital technology uh, is provide advanced analysis. So we can analyze your data in, and create visualization. So if you, if you get my point. Yes, um, right. Hello. Okay. We can uh, Hello? get your point. So. Thank you, Rahim. You can uh, lower your hand. Is that uh, Judith? Hello. Is yeah. This is Dennis. Oh, I can share the. I, yes, this is Dennis. I just wanted to respond to the question. So yes, the system uh, before introducing electronic immunization registry in Tanzania. The immunization and vaccine program in Tanzania managed to identify like seven um, challenges that encounters immunization data. One of the challenges was to identify a unique identifier. The other one was uh, how to trace the photos from, from the community. So one of the system that is doing is to address those challenges. And so far the system has managed to do so. For example, in identifying uh, uh, the photos, this when they are doing registration, uh, health providers used to capture records for the clients and capturing phone numbers. And then the system automatically uh, uh, makes a, a schedule for the immunization from the birth up to the HPV when they are 15. So if the client doesn't uh, return back on the due date, then the system automatically um, generates that report for the defaulters. So health providers are easy to access that report and then trace defaulters from the facility. But also it tries to capture the areas where the uh, clients comes from. So it's even easier to know that where the where are the the where are the areas where the clients comes most? So it's easy even to do, to make a decision according to that. The issue here is maybe they didn't prepare those uh, data quality issues because the questions was more of the use of electronic system and not on the impact. So maybe the secretariat can prepare the, another webinar if possible, so they can share what comes out from the system. But in real sense, the system helps. What is needed is just the demand of the data from the higher level so that healthcare workers can be able to use electronic system and then they need fall up so they can see those data from the lower level to the higher level. That is what I can share from the question of Rahim. Thank you very much, uh, Atifiwe. Uh, colleagues, I think um, um, we've come to the end of uh, the question time. And um, allow me just to give a brief uh, summary of what we've discussed. Um, this topic is really an eye opener and uh, it, it was really bordering on um, the experiences of the health workers themselves with uh, these electronic uh, gadgets that we are using for immunization registries. And uh, we've looked at the experiences and uh, from the submissions so far, we can see that 
the electronic systems are far much better than the paper systems because of uh, the speed at which data can be processed, the security that is there, and also the storage, which is uh, very easy. And I think most of the panelists alluded to the, to the scheduling of uh, clients as being very easy, and also the logistics themselves, or logistics management uh, becomes very easy, looking at stocks and uh, everything else. We also looked at the challenges and uh, most of the countries, I think we can agree with me that uh, connectivity is one of those big challenges that we have. And also the devices themselves, how then do we uh, optimize their use uh, in terms of uh, secure, securing them physically uh, for them not to be stolen and things like that. So there are a lot of other things in terms of technology uh, the usability, all those things, I think we need to keep on improving on uh, systems. Uh, there's nothing like a perfect system. So there's, there should always be a vision after a vision. So we, all, we have to go back to our users and keep on getting submissions and keep on making improvements so that it becomes easier and a more holistic system. Uh, there are a lot of lessons that have been shared by our peers. And um, in a nutshell, what we can say is um, there is a lot of uh, ex expertise and experience. Uh, and from the discussions that were there, we can see that a lot of uh, uh, transfer, knowledge transfer has been done from the experts to the people that do not have the experience. How do you transfer knowledge in terms of trainings? Is it peer-to-peer? Uh, -peer? I think this came out more prominent, but there are also other ways where you can call people in a traditional way. You put them like in a classroom, you teach them and uh, you, you transfer knowledge to them and you see. But obviously there are issues of attrition. You cannot be sure that the, those health workers that have been trained will remain in that uh, facility. Uh, doctor, are you still there? Dr. Shampila? We are given in terms of, I think, financial support. This requires the ministries of health so that uh, the systems and the whole program becomes successful. Uh, technical support came out uh, prominently and also in uh, inter interoperability of systems. The same electronic immunization register can be interoperated or integrated to other systems so that the end users do not have to move from one system to the next system entering the same data. So in a nutshell, I think it has been a very fruitful discussion and um, I will now hand over to Catherine just to give us the closing remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shampile. And I uh, would like to convey our special gratitude uh, to the speakers as well. That was, um, it's been a very engaging um, uh, discussion, very, very fruitful. And I'm sure that um, uh, for those who'd uh, like to set up uh, electronic immunization registries in their countries, they've um, picked one or two uh, lessons uh, from what has been shared um, this afternoon. And um, I think there was an issue about, um, you know, the impact of the systems. And um, I think there was a suggestion also that uh, maybe the secretariat could organize another webinar that could uh, look at uh, you know, what the impact of these systems has been on our communities. And I um, would like to thank you once again for taking time, um, especially the audience as well. We know that you're all very busy people and I would like to thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And I uh, would like to urge you to continue connecting with us on those various uh, platforms that are showing um, on your screen. Uh, we have uh, the Google groups, we have um, you know, the different social media platforms um, that you can connect with us. And uh, we hope that uh, you, know, you 
also uh, read uh, some of our blogs and uh, that uh, you also um, subscribe uh, to our newsletter where we share quite a lot of um, um, information. So until next time, we would like uh, to wish you all a pleasant um, evening or is it morning for those of you who've joined us um, from the eastern, I mean, from the western part um, of the world. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Oh, by Bye, the way, Catherine. we will, be, we nice will be sharing. Thank you. We will be sharing the recording. So watch out for that. We'll be sharing the recording. This webinar was recorded, actually. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.